Alright, so this is pretty much the basic Roblox character, okay? Just a blocky avatar, like nothing's weird, right? You can see the head, you can see the hands, torso, waist, all of that stuff, right? Very normal character. And now what if I go into the workspace and I click on my character, right? What is this? This is a thing called Humanoid Root Part, which if you've ever developed in studio or you know you watched any tutorials, be it mine or someone else's, you've likely seen this or heard this being mentioned. But what is this actually, right? We can't see it right now. If I set the transparency to be zero, for example, and I start walking, it looks like this. The Humanoid Root Part is just a regular part. It's not like some special thing that Roblox made, it's not like some like unique new item or instance that is specifically designed to control characters, it's just a basic part. But clearly it has a purpose, clearly there's something that this part does that is important. And the thing is, I don't care if you've ever developed or not, right, you could just be a regular Roblox player, but I feel like it's just good to know how your player or your character, sorry, even functions, right? So now the main thing that you need to really quickly understand is that there are different types of characters. Okay, you, pr you probably know this already. You probably are like, oh yeah, makes sense. But a better example would be the differences between using R15 and R6. So initially Roblox just used R6. I'm pretty sure, right? I'm not too caught up on the history of modeling. But let's say, for example, I summon my avatar, okay? This is how my avatar would usually look like. Yeah, there we go. That is exactly me, literally me. But what if I spawn my avatar? But with R6, like what's gonna happen right now, right? Let's see. Interesting, okay. So immediately, as you can see, he's a lot smaller, right? And he doesn't have this whole muscle bodysuit that my original avatar has. And the reason for this is actually very simple. If I were to go on this initial rig, so right now the rig that I have selected is this R15 updated model, right? And let's look at its body parts, okay? Because anything that has this like world icon or this blocky icon is considered a part, right? Head, left foot, left hand, left lower arm, left lower leg. As you can see, it's very detailed, right? There's a lot of like left upper arm, hand. But then if I close this rig and I click on the second rig, it's not as detailed. It just has the head, left arm, left leg, right arm, right leg, torso, and the humanoid root part, but that's it. It doesn't have the lower arm, lower leg, hand. It doesn't have any of that. And it makes sense because this avatar is the initial Roblox avatar and it's not meant to be too detailed, right? It's not meant to have like a hand or whatever and i can show you this again by summoning the, you know the r6 block avatars for example like you can hopefully see the main differences here right this guy has a hand over here right he has a torso he has feet this guy just has the blocky parts he's not as detailed and therefore has less parts and so why is this an issue well this becomes an issue when you realize that different avatars will have different parts like sure there are certain parts that are the same like the head um, or I think the torso, or not even the torso, because there's an upper torso and lo lower torso. And before this wasn't a problem, because they just had one rig type, but when they started introducing, like, all of these, like, Arfro, Mesh, R15, Masculine, Feminine, I'm not even too sure if this makes a big difference, but it was clear that the avatars needed some distinction for developers to be able to script them and actually be consistent with each character. And so what if I were to make a part, and what I wanted to do is that whenever the part actually gets touched, so script.parent, touch, connect function, other part that touched our part, so script.parent being the part, what if I wanted to make it so that the player, whoever touches the part, gets teleported a couple studs above this part, okay? Well, what I could do, number one, is I need to detect if the part that actually touched this part belongs to a player or not, right? So we can say if other part dot parent, because let's say, for example, the left leg touched the part, right? Is the left leg dot parent a character of a player? How do we check that? Well, we need to understand, okay, what does every single character have? And in fact, this actually isn't really the job of humanoid root part, because a lot of people just use humanoid, right? You could use humanoid root part, but a lot of people do use humanoid. So they can say if other part parent find first child humanoid, right? Or find first child, which is a humanoid. So that's another thing. Then you can ensure that yes, this part does belong to a character. But then this is where it gets tricky. How do we teleport a character up? Because this is another thing, right? When you don't know what character you're dealing with, right? How do you know what part of theirs to move up? What if you say, okay, I want to move the player's left arm, but this second rig doesn't have a left arm. They have a left upper arm or left lower leg. And sure, both of them have the head, okay? Both of them have the same item named head, fine. But what if, again, in the future, 
we have like an avatar that doesn't have a head or another thing that's possible is that what if your game has custom avatars right like sure at that point it's kind of your fault but like if your game has a custom avatar which doesn't have a head how can you ensure that this part will work for every player flawlessly and obviously this is where the humanoid root part comes in and this is where the second main idea of the humanoid root part comes in which is teleporting the player i'm gonna delete the old rig because we don't need it and i'll open up the new one if I open up the human root part, we'll see a couple things. We'll see original size, which basically just determines the original size of the human root part. Makes sense, right? But then we have these things, root attachment and root rig attachment. So you might be thinking right now, oh, what does any of this mean, right? Okay, let's do this. Let's set the local pause to TP. So position to teleport, right? We're going to set this equal to the script.parent.position, so the position of the part, plus, um, and then let's add a couple units up. So 10 units up. Okay, this is going to be the position we want the player to teleport to. And so let's say other parts dot parent being the character dot head, okay? Dot head dot position is now equal to position to teleport, okay? So I'm gonna summon in, I'm gonna step on the part. Interesting, nothing happens. Uh, okay, then what if I say um, dot, hmm, I don't, I don't even know, what do we have? Upper torso, upper torso dot position, okay. Is this gonna work? Let's see. I mean, upper torso. It's you know, it's in the middle of my character, so it should work. Hmm. Okay. Let me try this. Humanoid root part. And this works. Why does this work, and not the head, or the upper torso, or the hand, or like any other part that we might have played around with? Damn. I, I think I'm stuck. Wait. <laughs> okay. There we go. The simple answer lies in the fact that the humanoid root part is the root part of every character. What happens if I delete the right foot? Nothing. What happens if I delete the left upper arm? And now what happens if I delete the humanoid root part? I can't move. I've, <laughs> I can't move anymore. This doesn't kill the player as you might have expected because uh, the head does that. If I delete the head, then the player collapses. Makes sense, right? The humanoid root part is basically responsible for moving the entire character. Because think about it, how is the character even staying together? How do the hands stick together with the torso? How is the head sticking together with the torso? Well, it's the humanoid root part. If I open up the character right now, right, we can see that there are a lot of these things called motor 60s. And as you can see, these things almost connect parts together. They, they don't fully connect them because if you wanted to connect something, you'd use a weld constraint for that or like a weld. But this is how it works for characters. This is a very simplified explanation. Obviously, there's a lot more that, you know, we could talk about with characters. But if I were to explain it to someone who doesn't know much about Roblox or is just starting out, right? This is effectively how these things are connected. This lower, uh, this left lower arm is connected to the left upper arm. And then this left upper arm is connected to the upper torso. And if I click on this upper torso and I check its, you know, waist, it's connected to the lower torso. And finally, checking the lower torso, where is it? The root, it's connected to the humanoid root part. As you can see, everything is connected to a certain part. And then that final part is then connected to the humanoid root part because the humanoid root part is the main part of the character and then everything like kind of branches along from there right the hand isn't connected to the humanoid root part but without the humanoid root part the hand wouldn't exist and another funny thing to note is that the humanoid root part does also handle the sounds for the character so yeah bro that's the idea of a humanoid root part it's effectively just a thing that roblox realized oh damn we need to use this and their you know way of doing this was just to create a part they, they like this is literally just a part inside of roblox they couldn't have made like a special new item for the character this is literally just a basic part with all the same properties as a regular part right which is pretty funny like, I can set this to be anchored, and uh, now I cannot move. So yeah, the next time you're thinking that, oh, damn, my code isn't that organized, or it's not, you know, it doesn't handle everything, or, you know, it's not too efficient, this is how Roblox handles every single character, okay? So, <laughs> I wouldn't feel too bad if I were you. So yeah, subscribe, check out my course, my beautiful, lovely course in the description and the pinned comment. We are not back to basics yet, because I gotta delete these two. Um, and I think now we should be... Back to basics, thank you for watching.